Hello everyone, I am Dr. Yogesh Paude. In this lecture series on clinical enzymology, now we are going to switch on to seventh session. The seventh session is going to be on miscellaneous enzyme. What are the miscellaneous enzyme which find uh, utility in diagnosis of various disorders? Now coming to the specific learning objectives of this session. At the end of the session, students shall be able to discuss the utility of various miscellaneous enzymes in clinical management of various disorders. So these are the miscellaneous enzymes which otherwise, you know, are not very uh, commonly used, but because of their peculiar uh, appearance or peculiar rise in a particular disorder, they give you a confirmatory picture in a diagnosis or prognosis of that particular disorder. So let us see which are they. This is a table. You will find different miscellaneous enzymes here and we will find conditions where it is increased and it is decreased in. The normal reference ranges are given here but we are not going to discuss those because those are not normally used. So we will not discuss the normal reference ranges though they are uh, stated here. We will discuss the peculiar conditions in which they are increased or decreased. Okay. Coming to the first enzyme that is cholinesterase. Okay, though it is increased in nephrotic syndrome and myocardial infarction, uh, it, is it is found to be decreased in acute liver diseases, malnutrition, acute infectious diseases as well. But it is found to be decreased in OP poisoning. The fact that in organophosphorus poisoning, the cholinesterase activity is decreased, it has the clinical application. In case of 5' nucleotides, found find that it is increased in acute liver diseases, obstructive jaundice and tumor. Here, the fact that 5' nucleotides is increased in obstructive jaundice is of much importance compared to other diseases because its activity is correlated with increase in alkaline phosphatase activity in case of obstructive jaundice. And it, it gives you a second layer of confirmation that it is an obstructive jaundice if alkaline phosphatase activity is increased. So if both are increased, that means it is an obstructive jaundice. Coming to the third miscellaneous enzyme that is ornithine carbamoyl transferase. It is found to be increased in viral hepatitis, liver cirrhosis, obstructive jaundice. Because it is a liver enzyme, it is going to be increased in liver pathology. But if there are suspected secondary metastasis in liver and you find this enzyme increase, that gives you a confirmation that the tumor is somewhere else. Some other tissue is the primary tissue of that cancer and the secondary metastasis is coming in liver and proliferating there. Okay, So in that case, if the enzyme activity of ornithine carbamyl transferase is increased, it gives you a confirmation that yes, it is because of secondary metastasis in liver. Coming to the next enzyme, isolated dehydrogenase. In case of viral hepatitis and liver cirrhosis, it is increased. Leucine aminopeptidase. Leucine aminopeptidase is increased in hepatocellular carcinoma, liver cirrhosis and viral hepatitis. But it gives you a more specific picture in case of hepatocellular cancer. In case of hepatocellular cancer, you will find all liver enzymes increased. AST, ALT, alkaline phosphatase, gamma GGT, NT, fibrin nucleotides, etc. But rise of leucine aminopeptidase is definitive of hepatocellular carcinoma, a primary liver cancer. So if it is a primary liver cancer, it is leucine aminopeptidase. And if it is secondary metastasis, it is ornithine carbamyl transferase. So this, this, you know, uh, this table or this particular session gives you a lot many MCQs and viva questions. So please remember this table. Coming to the next uh, enzyme that is glycogen phosphorylase. There are three ISO enzymes: GPLL, glycogen phosphorylase, liver, muscle, that is MM, and GPBB that is brain and myocardial disease. So in case of liver disorders, individual uh, ISO enzyme studies can give you a better picture of confirmation. Glutamate dehydrogenase is found to be increased in centrilobular necrosis of liver. So there are different types of necrosis of liver. But in case of centrilobular necrosis of liver, you will find that increase in glutamate dehydrogenase gives you a confirmation of this kind of necrosis of liver. Whereas, in case of pan acinar or pan lobular necrosis of liver, serum alanine transaminase is increased. Serum alanine transaminase is for pan acinar or pan lobular necrosis 
and glutamate dehydrogenase increases specific for centri lobular necrosis of liver again there are two mcqs here coming to next the aldolase aldolase is specific for muscular dystrophies it's basically a muscle enzyme so in case of muscular dystrophies you will find increase in aldolase activity serum liver disease mi diabetes mellitus and leukemia will also show you picture with some rise of aldolase activity then coming to the gamma glutamyl transferase activity because it is liver enzyme it will it is going to be increased in acute hepatobiliary disorder alcoholic abuse cirrhosis anti convulsant theory and pancreatic diseases as well but its rise in alcohol abuse and alcoholic cirrhosis is more clinically significant compared to other disorders of liver why because it correlates with the degree of alcohol abuse and the cirrhosis the damage caused due to alcohol abuse is correlated with rise in gamma glutamyl transferase okay so this is specific for alcohol abuse and the degree of liver disease because of alcohol abuse so thank you very much for watching this video if you like the content and the effort taken to prepare this presentation please hit the like button and share the video if you have not yet subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so that you get the notifications of upcoming videos in real time thank you so much guys please keep motivating us